Okay, may I request everyone to please stand for our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, class. This is Teacher Cherry, your teacher for Science 4. Yes, good morning. How are you today? Doing great. That's nice. Are you all ready for our new lesson for today? That's very nice. I know you're all excited for our new lesson for today. But before that, let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Now, who can recall me of our previous lesson? Yes, Anna. Very good. Our previous lesson was about materials that absorb water. Now, who can give me an example of material that absorbs water? Yes, James. A sponge. Very good. How about a material that does not absorb water? Yes, Ricky. Very good. A plastic bag. I know these two are examples of materials that absorb water and the other one does not absorb water. Now, who can give me the reason why sponge is an example of material that absorbs water? Why is it sponge absorbs water? Yes. Very good because it has a small holes that allows the water and air to pass through. How about a plastic bag? Why is it a material that does not absorb water? Yes. Very good because it doesn't have a small holes that allows water and air to pass through. And a sponge is an example of what material? Yes, very good. It's a porous material. And how about the plastic bag? Can you guess? Who can recall? Yes, very good. A non porous material. Very good class. You can recall our previous lesson and because of that I know you are all ready for our new and exciting lesson for today. Okay, now have you tried tossing a stick to a pond or throwing a toy to a bathtub? I know you're all curious what will happen to those objects when placed into the water. Okay, for our activity this morning, I'll group the class into two. This will be the group one and this will be the group two. Each group will have a basin with water and materials. So for group one, you will have a plastic bottle, pencil, a mug, and a bottle cap. And for group two, you will have a metal spoon, plastic cup, a coin, and a cotton. I know you're all excited for our activity for today. But before we we'll start our activity this morning, First, you have to observe the materials that you have or the materials that each group has. So we have a basin with water and different kinds of objects. We have a small object and a big ones. So can we observe it before and after the activity? After 
after we've done our small experiment this morning, you will share your observations to your classmates. Okay, are you all ready? Very good. Now let's start with group one. Okay, group one, based on the activity, what happens to the plastic bottle when placed into the water? Yes, very good. It floats. Is there other materials that also float? Yes, very good. The pencil and the bottle cap. Very good. But how about the mug? Yes, very good. The mug, when placed into the water, sinks. Very good, Group 1. Now let's give a fireworks applause for Group 1. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boom! Very good, Group 1. Now let's proceed with Group 2. Yes, Group 2. Share your observations to the activity. Yes, the metal spoon and the coin sink when placed into the water. Very good. How about the other objects? What happened to those objects when placed into the water? Yes, the plastic cap and the cotton floats when placed into the water. Very good observation from group two. Now let's give a rain applause for group two. Yay! Very good. Did you enjoy the activity? Yes, that's nice to hear. So kids, based on our activity, what do we mean by float? Yes, very good. Float means it is when materials stay on top of the water. But how about sink? What do we mean by sink? Yes? Very good. Sink means when materials fall at the bottom of the water. Very good. What do you think is the reason why some materials float and some sink? Yes, very good. Objects that are more dense or heavier than water tend to sink, while objects that are less dense or lighter than the water tend to float. Now, I have here two plastic bottles. The other one is empty and the other one is filled with water. Now if these two bottles placed in water, do they both sink or do they both float? What do you think is the answer? Now let's try to put or place these two bottles in the water. Yes, you're all correct. The empty bottle floated because it is less dense or lighter than water. And the bottle which is filled with water sank. It's because it is more dense or heavier than water. So as we discover, some materials has different characteristics or properties. They have different sizes shapes, weight, and others. Some solid materials may float or sink in the water. Now, I have here pictures of different materials.
can you classify which one belongs to materials that float or materials that sink? Let's start with the rubber band. Is that a material that floats or material that sinks? Very good! It is a material that floats. How about the slippers? Yes, very good. It is a material that floats. How about the keys? We all have keys at home. What do you think? Yes, very good. It is a material that sinks. And lastly, how about the basketball? Is that a material that sink or a material that floats? Yes, correct. It is a material that floats. Very good, everyone. Now that we know what are some materials that sink or float and the reason why it floated or sank, I'll give you a short quiz to check if you understood our lesson for today. Once you're done, can you pass your paper to me and then get your assignment notebook for your assignment? Well done for today, kids! You did a great job! I'll see you tomorrow for our new lesson! Bye for now!